Just wait for those helicopters to clear off. Good morning guys. So today I'm going to try and explain to you why I'm switching from full frame to micro four thirds cameras. seems pretty obvious when you think about it but shooting a video on top of a mountain really isn't the best scenario for audio. So obviously this isn't my day to day full frame camera, uh, this is my Pentax MX which is of course a 35mm camera which is where a full frame gets its name from because the sensor covers a 35mm frame equivalent area. So as you're probably aware I mainly shoot Nikon. This is my full frame Nikon camera, it's the D750 and I've had this body for probably about 10 months or so after moving up from a crop sensor APS-C. So mounted to the D750 at the moment. I have my Nikon 16 to 35 wide angle lens and it is wide, let me tell you. I have absolutely loved shooting with this camera since I've had it. Um, I've upgraded my glass as well to full frame lenses from my crop sensor lenses and together I've been really happy with the results. I can shoot really well in low light. It's great for landscape photography. It's nowhere near as heavy as the, say the Nikon D800 series, but they're still fairly big. And being a bigger sensor, that generally means you need more glass in front of it. And glass is heavy. So, as well as the 16 to 35 lens, there's an idea of the size of that one. You'll probably know my favourite lens at the moment is the 85mm. Now, bear in mind, this is an old lens. This is about 30 years old. And by modern standards, this is a very small 85mm lens, let me tell you. I rented the Sigma 85 probably six months ago and it's three or four times the size and weight of this one and then finally I have my 24 to 70 is the Tamron G2 2.8 version uh, I've been blown away at times at the quality of this lens uh, but again it is hefty and then I do have a couple of those I've got a little old 50mm 1.8 prime lens and my old Tamron 70 to 300 telephoto as well. Now, if you are a fan of this channel, you'll know that I went to Belgium and I really want to shoot both photo and video for the channel and I just did not want to be lugging around all the heavy camera gear of my full frame DSLRs. So I started looking at alternatives and I bought the Lumix GX8 which I'm filming on right now. It's a micro four thirds interchangeable lens system. Um, the video features on it are great, it's a really small package and the stills photos are still really good as well and I absolutely loved using it while I was in Belgium. It's such a small setup even with the Rode Video Micro and I use the little Manfrotto Pixie tripod it's a really nice lightweight little system for traveling with. I've noticed, especially after using GX8 extensively over those few days, that with my full frame gear, 
I really noticed how bulky and heavy it was after that and I gradually noticed especially over the winter when the weather just wasn't good and that started getting to my motivation to actually get out and shoot that part of that lack of motivation was the fact that I had so much gear to be lugging around with me that it was just putting me off I didn't want to go out carrying this big backpack full of gear that got me thinking more about the Micro Four Third system um, I'd heard great things about the GH5 and GH5S uh, primarily for the video community I know personally a few people who use a pair of GH5s or so literally as their only bodies they don't touch anything else and they've built their careers on those cameras and as you'll know on this channel um, I've been using this GX8 for almost all my videos since I've had it which was in I think it was the end of September that I bought it and I'm sure you will have seen a massive improvement in quality actual video quality um, in those videos compared to my earlier ones on the other hand in terms of stills photographs I've never really heard anything great from a Micro Four Thirds camera generally speaking when people are like if you're on the forums or the Facebook groups a new camera comes out and all that everyone's talking about is the full frame cameras no one's talking about APS-C's let alone Micro Four Thirds cameras and resolution is a big one as well that's all I really talk about especially on landscape pages they're all about the resolution <laughs> um, the D750 I've been dead happy with that and that's only a 24 megapixel camera and really for me it wasn't a massive step down at all switching to the GX8 because the GX8 has a 20 megapixel sensor so you, you're losing 4 megapixels it's really no big deal there now in terms of resolution the reason that a Micro Four Thirds camera can only reach a certain resolution a certain number of megapixels is because a pixel can only get so small <laughs> but a Micro Four Thirds sensor is obviously smaller than a full frame um, it is not in fact anything to do with the ratio of four thirds it is near enough exactly half the size of a full frame sensor the actual name of the four third sensor Gerald of Gerald Undon actually did a superb video of explaining this I'm not going to go into great detail but I'll link to his video in the notes below um, it's not even to do with the fact that the aspect ratio of the 4 third sensor is 4 by 3 that's what a lot of people think but it's not true the actual reason it's called 4 thirds is to do with old old video technology to do with the tubes in a television old television set and again like I say Gerald did a very good explanation of this and check out his video for it one downside or very common downside to having a smaller sensor as a lot of people will tell you is dynamic range so you get a lot of full frame cameras now which are exceeding the 40 maybe even getting towards 50 megapixel mark but there's cameras with lower megapixels such as the D750 with 24 megapixel even though they're covering the same area the reason it's a lower count is because those pixels are bigger which means they can capture more light and therefore more data in the raw file which allows you to recover afterwards more details in the shadows and the highlights I tend to bracket my shots anyway so it doesn't really matter to me if I need to I can just blend the shots Another key aspect that you'll hear lots of people talking about um, is depth of field. Basically when you're using a full frame camera you will be able to get a much shallower depth of field compared to a 
like a full third sensor but that can be combated so the difference in depth of field between the two camera systems it has all sorts to do with the image circle and flange distances between the lens and the sensor all that again I think Gerald covers all that in his video um, so I'm not going to go into great detail about it but having said all this you have to give credit where credit's due to Panasonic and Olympus they've really taken advantage of the disadvantages of their camera systems after looking more into the Micro Four Thirds system um, nothing from Olympus was really catching my eye but I had noticed the Lumix G9 crop up a few times. If you're watching my channel, it's quite likely you've come across James Popsis before now, and he shoots exclusively on Lumix G9. And also Ted Forbes of the Art of Photography. Obviously he reviews the Hame cameras every year. He and Jaron Snyder of Imaging Resources, they started a podcast not too long ago. And in their 2018 camera of the year show they both agreed that the most underrated camera of the year was the Lumix G9 and I bought one so yeah I went to the photography show in Birmingham weekend before last I had an unexpected day off and I had a free ticket because I'm trade so I found a cheap train ticket and off I went I wasn't really aiming to walk away with a camera but you know one thing leads to another I went straight to the Lumix stand as soon as I got in um, I was checking out the S1 and S1R Lumix's new full frame mirrorless cameras and I was blown away by them I did slot my memory card into them to try and get some uh, example footage but I forgot to changed the settings to write to both cards so I came away with no images but just from reviewing off the back of the camera and from other people's reviews as well the quality especially on the S1 with the smaller uh, megapixel count was outstanding I was using the 50mm 1.4 with it and both the photo and video were tack sharp the focusing systems were on point I have to say but I couldn't afford that so I moved on so I went over to the, their Micro Four Thirds cameras I went to just see what they were like I picked up a G9 I had a quick little play with it and instantly I fell in love with it either way I came from back home from Birmingham with a new camera which came with a battery grip and this snazzy bag and I'm absolutely loving it so far I also picked up a couple of lenses so I got the Leica Lumix 8-18mm super wide angle lens as well as the Lumix 42.5mm f1.7 which is the equivalent to an 85mm lens which you all know I love using and all of this came in below the £2,000 mark the D750 that's that was second hand that cost me over a thousand pound second hand with about 50,000 actuations on the shutter I got the Lumix G9 itself with the battery grip a spare battery and the snazzy bag thrown in for free all for £850 <laughs> which is an insane deal so yeah I don't think I was ever going to leave there without a new camera a few comparisons maybe so this is the Nikon with its 16 to 35 mil lens on this is the Lumix with its 8 to 18 mil lens on, which is equivalent to 16 to 36 mil. And look at the size difference there. 
even with the battery grip on the G9, it's still lighter <laughs> than this system. Uh, I did get these on the scales last night, but I cannot remember the uh, the weights of them. But I believe that the G9 with the 42.5mm lens on was roughly at least four or five hundred grams, i.e. half a kilo lighter than the D750 with the 85mm lens on, <laughs> which is a ridiculous weight saving. And then the same again, I weighed my Nikon 16 to 35mm lens and I'm sure that weighed about six or seven hundred grams by itself which is the same as what the G9 with the 85mm lens weighed. <laughs> so obviously that is one major difference and possible selling point of the Micro Four Third systems. No. So I mentioned before about Panasonic and probably Olympus as well taking advantage of the disadvantages of the Micro Four Thirds system. One of those is image stabilisation. So in both photo and video, the G9 body is able to get, I think, five or five and a half stops of image stabilization. And then when you add the stabilization within the lenses, you're getting six, up to six and a half stops of image stabilization, which is insane. And then on top of that, we'll bring resolution into it with that image stabilization technology, that means that obviously they, they're able to shift the sensor around a bit within the camera. The G9 has a high resolution mode built in, which means that you can get up to an 80 megapixel image using a micro four third sensor. So how that works is you go through the menus, you set it up, hit the shutter, and the camera will take eight individual shots, moving the sensor slightly in between each shot, and then merge those into one 80 megapixel image. I can't do that with my Nikon, not at all. <laughs> I'll demonstrate this now quickly on the scene behind me. So I'm going to use the G9 with the eight to 18 mil lens and I'm going to use the D750 with a 16 to 35 mil lens. I'll go to eight and 16 mil respectively, so we have the same field of view. And I'll show you the difference between the two files in Lightroom. Okay, so we're in Lightroom now. The first image that we're looking at here is from the D750 with the 16 to 35 mil lens at 16 millimeter shooting at f8 iso 100 and 1 over 250 shutter speed so what what we're going to do here is zoom in 200 percent and there's a little red house on the side of the lake here we're going to zoom in on that and this is as far in as we're getting basically if we go in at two to one you can kind of see just how grainy pixelated that little house is so then what we're going to look at next is the g9 normal 20 megapixel raw file we're going to zoom into the same house again obviously at 20 megapixel this is slightly smaller than the nikon's 24 megapixel but when we go on to the high resolution file, you can see there's no difference at a glance. But as soon as we zoom in to that little house, you can see how much bigger this file must be. <laughs> We're getting a much clearer picture of the house on the side of the lake there. And we can even go at two to one, and we, we can still see detail in the house compared to the Nikon file. Okay, so we've got a second example here. This is from the same location, but a different point of view. Um, this is just a shot of the Snowden summit. Um, this is the 
shot with a Nikon at 85mm. So on the Lumix we're going to be using the 42.5mm, even though Lightroom says it's 43mm. But we'll zoom right in towards the summit, 100% on the Nikon shot, and that's as good as you're getting. We're just going to move over to the Lumix original 20 megapixel shot, and again you can see that looks near enough the same to the Nikon, albeit a little smaller. But then when we go onto the high resolution shot, this is 80.5 megapixel you'll see how much bigger this file is and you can easily make out the folks at the very summit of Snowden as well as the cafe off to the left there and then just as another quick little example these are a couple of shots from the same day but later on at Unispandi I didn't take the Nikon with me on this shoot but this is just a detail shot so this is with the just the normal 20 megapixel raw image looking at the slate here you can see a fair bit of nice detail we'll try and zoom in twice and you'll see it start to get that little bit pixelated when you're really looking closely then we'll compare that with the high resolution image I know it's a little bit darker but you'll still see a huge, huge difference in image quality in terms of resolution and sharpness. The difference in resolution and detail is absurd. Another advantage of having such a small sensor is that you have a smaller image circle. Now again, Gerald covered this in his video. But I can demonstrate very simply the difference. This is my Nikon 85mm lens. This is my Lumix on top, the 42.5 85mm equivalent lens. And you can see the size difference in the rear elements. Having a smaller sensor means that you don't need the lens to have as wide an opening which means that you can adapt lenses. Almost any other lens available on the market can be adapted to Micro Four Thirds. I've actually got one on order for my old Pentax film lenses. And I am thinking of getting one for Nikon as well, so I can still use maybe one or two of my prime lenses. There's two main types of adapters. You can get an adapter, which is literally a hollow bit of tubing much like an extension tube which will allow you just to mount the other lens on there but bear in mind that with the smaller sensor you've got a two times crop factor if I added my 50mm lens full frame lens onto the micro four third sensor I would end up with a 100mm lens but then you can also get speed boosters uh, the most popular brands for these are Metabones and Sigma as well. Um, these actually have glass elements within them which allow you to take advantage of the wider apertures of the full frame lens and thus achieving closer to the natural depth of field that those wide apertures will allow you to get. I think probably the one major weak point with Lumix cameras, especially in video mode, has been its autofocus tracking. Um, I've experienced it a few times, but not too much with the JX8, where in continuous focus it will start straying and wandering around. I've been shooting right in front of my face like this before now and it's just not been able to pick up my face. It's been focusing on the mountains in the background. But as soon as I got the G9, as soon as I got it home, got the batteries charged and I updated firmware as well, the autofocus in that is outstanding, I have to say. I was sat one night just watching Game of Thrones and it was picking up 
every face or every body on the screen and you can just just like the Sony system you can switch between which object that you want it to track and it will just keep tracking so this could be another great point for me because I could well not even leave the house with the GX8 anymore for these videos I could just go out with the G9 and use it for both I could just head out of the house with just the G9 with the microphone on there and record both video and stills with the one camera rather than looking around two cameras. So that is more or less it for this video really. Um, I got a new camera and dead excited about it <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you really. But I'm sure I'll be giving more updates on it um, I might leave it perhaps a month or so of continuous and varied use to give a full-on verdict on it but I'm dead excited I am seriously considering ditching my full frame gear and I couldn't at the moment be much happier with the use and final products from the Lumix G9 so just to recap a few of the elements that have made me make the switch or at least consider it um, one is size and weight um, then we've got the actual cost of the gear image stabilization video quality is far superior in terms of video the audio is also far better using a uh, just plug and play microphone the built-in preamps on the Panasonic devices are superb especially compared to the Nikon <laughs> uh, usability in the menus the Panasonic menus are so so nice to actually delve into and use one thing I didn't mention is customization you can I think there's like 10 different custom buttons that you can set up on the G9 as well as your C profiles custom profiles as well I've already set up two I've got another I think possibly three or even four that I can set up so what's that that's at least eight perks so far that I've found with the G9 nine I forgot the high res mode um, as I'm sure you all agree from my examples the difference in image quality and well just detail and resolution is incredible really otherwise uh, be sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell to see any further updates on the G9 as well as my other content as well and I'll see you in the next one Woo!